Welcome back, my beautiful sisters, to the Intentional Christian Woman Podcast. I'm Rosie, I'm your host, and I'm so, so excited that you can join me today. Well, first of all, I have a little treat. If you are watching on YouTube, you can see that I uh, you're seeing my face today, but not only my face, you're seeing <laughs> two special, amazing women's faces, not, not just two, three, three, <laughs> because I was going to have two, but the third one came and I was like, yes, they're all here. <laughs> So I'm super, super excited. I'm going to introduce them in just a moment, but I just want to say that this is really special to me, this interview, because I am a huge fan of these ladies personally, and I think, and I know they're going to bring a lot of value to you today with the topic we're going to speak about. And it's a question that I know that a lot of you really want to know. And, and in my community, um, I do get this question a lot when you enter into our community and you say, when I ask you what you want to get most out of the community, you basically want to know how to study the Bible, how to study for yourselves. So uh, the topic for today is how to study the Bible for yourself and where to begin. So really, sometimes, you know, you come in and you're not, maybe you're a brand new Christian or you've been around for a while, but you haven't really been a student of the Bible. You don't know how to do that. You think maybe you have to go to some kind of Bible college or seminary, and that is not true. There are ways to study your Bible for yourselves to really connect with got on a deep level and not have to go through school, right? So mm -hmm. um, I know that these women will bring such amazing encouragement by sharing their knowledge, their expertise, their skills, their amazing spirit, and their love for the word, just like I have an amazing love for the word. And I know that if you're listening to this podcast and you're watching, uh, if you're on the YouTube channel, that I know that you are also curious or you want to reignite perhaps your love for God's word. So that's going to be our topic for today. And before I begin, I want to introduce these beautiful, beautiful ladies. So first of all, they are from Coffee and Bible Time, which is a Christian YouTube channel. They actually have about 350,000 members right now, and their podcast has about 1.2 million downloads. So it is a really big podcast, a very celebrated, and I love the podcast personally myself. This is a place where people of all ages come together to learn, grow, and flourish in Christ. Sisters Ashley and Taylor and their mentor mama are passionate about sharing the truth of Jesus Christ and the gospel message. So they post Christian videos and podcasts weekly to help encourage and equip people to delight in God's word and thrive in Christian living. I'm super excited to introduce <laughs> the three ladies. So first it'll be, I'll introduce Ashley. Ashley graduated from Moody Bible Institute with a degree in biblical studies. She has a passion for studying and teaching God's word and is determined to share it with the world. It's Ashley's desire to see many people come to know Jesus personally. Taylor Krause is currently a senior at Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. She is studying the Bible and counseling in, his, in hopes to help young women who are struggling with body image and eating disorders. She desires to, know, to show those who are struggling that there is ultimately hope in Christ. And actually she recently graduated. So she's a recent mm -hmm. graduate, congratulations. <laughs> and mentor mama is Ellen Krause. She has over mm -hmm. 20 years of biblical studies experience. She's a key player to the team as she combines her master's degree in marketing and years in corporate America to help Coffee and Bible Time flourish. She hosts the Coffee and Bible Time podcast and mentors many women around the world through this ministry. W ladies, welcome. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show. I'm Thank so happy to have you, you here. Uh, Thank, Thank you, you for having, having us. It's exciting to be here with you, Rosa. Oh, I'm, I'm even more excited. So uh, I know I already introduced you, but if you want to add on to what I already said, um, if you want to tell us a little something about yourself, perhaps maybe if you want to share a favorite verse, um, anything at all, anything at all you want to share just to add on to the introduction, please feel free. Yeah. Ashley, I think you should go first because you have exciting things going on in your life. Yeah. Um, so I recently got married about a year and a half ago and I moved away and I moved away from home. That's why I'm on a separate Zoom screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am actually now expecting my first child. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so, so thankful that, that God has blessed us with 
you know, a little baby and, and just looking forward to all the fun things that come with that. So yeah, that's my update. <laughs> Amazing. Congratulations. Thank any you. Any of your other ladies want to share anything else? Uh, sure. Well, you had mentioned favorite verses and mine's actually a favorite Psalm. So I will share uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. That Psalm I learned at a very young age. And even though at the time that I memorized it, I didn't fully understand what it meant. It has stayed with me all of these years. And so now I do recite it pretty much daily, <laughs> um, depending on, you know, my, my circumstances in my day. Um, but I, I lean into that Psalm and I love it. Yeah. Awesome. I love that Psalm, I think, because you love it so much too. It's mm -hmm. definitely something that I like to recite if I'm feeling anxiety. And I think there are some songs that are related to Psalm 23. I don't know. People get really creative with scripture nowadays yeah. and people sing it. And it's really helpful for me to listen to scripture being sung when I'm like in times of um, trial. So anyways, that song was special for me this past summer when I was dealing mm. with some anxiety. But for me, um, this is Taylor speaking. I feel like we all have similar voices, which is why it kind of could be a little <laughs> bit confusing. But um, yeah, I'm going to be an aunt soon. That's the main excitement in my life. And I did just graduate. So that's also a really exciting. Feels like a uh, victory in that area. It can be a lot going to school for so long. Just, and we're yeah. just super excited to have Taylor full time with us here at Coffee and Bible Time. It's been so many years that um, between the three of us, we've all been kind of part time mm -hmm. and some doing it full time. And then there's just been so many things up and down. Yeah. And this is the first time that all three of us since you graduated just a month ago. Yeah. Um, have been able to do that. Mm -hmm. So we're just really excited about how God is going to use Taylor's gifts in this ministry as he already has, but just mm -hmm. to a more fuller extent. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I'm excited too. And it's just really been good to watch you, especially the um, Taylor and Ashley, just kind of flourish through the years, you know, starting so mm -hmm. young in the, in the channel, uh, and mm -hmm. so just kind of growing and 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 now mm -hmm. in a new stage, new stages of life, you know, it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, let's let's get into it. Uh, so we want to talk about how. So this is this is really the question, right? I want to know how to study the Bible for myself, but I don't even know where to begin. So we're going to talk about the how. But before we talk about the how, I want to know why is it why is it so important for Christian women or Christian Christians in general? to know or learn how to study the Bible for themselves. It's extremely important. There's so many reasons why it's important. I obviously highly recommend everyone to go to church on Sundays and hear the sermon and to be filled in that way. Um, but that's only one day out of the week for an hour. And then you have the rest of the week, right, to... Um, you just go through life and you go through ups and downs, challenges. And, you know, we have mothers, we have daughters, we have, you're a teacher, we have so many different, you know, types of people and going through different life experiences and getting into scripture every single day outside of just going to church will really equip you in any area of life. Like I said, whether you're a mother, whether you're a daughter, whether you're going through anxiety, whether you're going through sickness, whether you're going through a trial, it connects you to the Lord in a personal and intimate way. And it helps you through the ups and downs of life. And so when you know how to study your Bible personally, and kind of for yourself and at home, you're able to you know, not only hear the word at church, but you're able to hear it throughout the week and you can be confident of knowing, hey, I can study this for myself and I can teach it to my kids or I can teach it to my friends and I can be a light and I can continue, you know, when you're connected to the vine, right? Reading scripture, studying scripture helps you stay connected to Jesus, who is our true vine. Uh, you're able to then 
help give life to others. So it's just, it it really is so essential to be in the word just throughout the week. Yeah. Tay, Ma, do you have anything else to add? <laughs> yeah, I would just add that I kind of like to think of it as this relationship that you're building and growing with Jesus is kind of like uh, what you would do with a friend. I mean, you can't expect to get to know someone to get to know God and all of his different qualities unless you spend time with them. And so um, for me, that time in God's word, learning more about him and his character and all these um, qualities that he has is what really draws you into um, knowing him more fully. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I absolutely agree. Going to church is important. Being a part of the body is important. Even, you know, when your church has maybe a midweek service, that's also important. When you have get togethers, that's great. When you study the Bible in groups, that's really helpful. But when you study the Bible for yourself, it, there's nothing like it. It is a relationship with God. And so, you know, it's it's funny because I actually um, one of the I, I recently, as I shared with you before pressing the recording record button, I recently published um, a devotional, 30 day devotional on Psalm 119. And it was really just to, as I've been sharing with the, the ladies on my podcast, is to help uh, instill this sense of like, why is it so important to really be in your word and the the amazing, amazingness, I guess, of God's word. Um, and so I really want women just like you ladies want women and men, of course, to, to really be able to connect with Christ, to really um, know him, you know, when, when you, you know, Ashley, you're, you're married, you know, and of course, Ellen, you're as well married, you know, that if you went into your house, uh, after a long day, and you're seeing your husband, you say nothing, or you just say, hey, what's up? Or how are you? And then that's it. Like, that's your only communication, or if, if any, right, it would be mm -hmm. kind of weird not to have that quality time connection. So mm -hmm. I feel like with God, it's even more important. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. I absolutely agree. So let's get into the how. How would it, how would someone begin? Where would they start, whether they're a new Christian? Let, let's start with a new Christian, perhaps. And I know that maybe someone, it could be a new Christian or someone who's coming back to the faith, perhaps, that was kind of backsliding and wants to come back to the faith. How would they begin to study the Bible for themselves? That's a great question. I think that so many people approach this differently. And generally, I think you can approach this differently, depending on your personality type, depending how much you know about the Bible or how little you know about the Bible. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. And Ashley and, and I talk about this sometimes about how the way that I started reading my Bible for the first time, I feel like is a little unconventional, but I started by reading the smallest book of the Bible to the biggest book of the Bible, which looking back, I'm like, okay, that probably wasn't the most helpful way that I could have read through it because there is a lot of context throughout the Bible. I mean, it's filled with cultural context and real historical events that if you do read books out of order, it can kind of make you a little bit more confused. But what I will say is when I started reading the Bible, I was really overwhelmed at the thought of reading a book that was 50 pages long or had hundreds of chapters in it. And for me, just knowing that I was like, I, I might be too overwhelmed to even begin. So what steps can I take to ensure that I will actually get into my Bible, even if that means taking baby steps and removing the judgment from yourself and just getting into the word and any time spent in God's word is going to be better than no time spent in God's word. Mm -hmm. So for me, I started with the smallest book and there are books of the Bible that are two, three chapters long. And it's like maybe one or two pages in your Bible. You could literally read that in one day. And it's kind of incredible um, that the work, the work that the Holy Spirit can do in, in and through you reading the Bible, even if you don't, even if you didn't go to school for it and you don't really know much, the Spirit's still going to reveal things to you about God's word. So don't feel insecurity that you'll read it and you won't get anything out of it or, and don't feel insecure if you read it and you have questions because we all have questions, no matter 
if you've studied the Bible your entire life or if you're just beginning, if you have questions, that's great. And you should see that as an encouraging thing to keep digging and digging deeper. Um, but my anyways, to get back to that, the way that I started reading the Bible was uh, in the way of reading the sh- smallest book first. But the point that I want to make there is you should um, evaluate and assess your personality type. Uh, and see what you need to do in order to ensure that you are going to actually read it. So don't do something too overwhelming that you don't actually get into the word. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially for someone just coming, yeah, like a, a brand new Christian or someone that has been kind of like uh, rough on the edges, you know, or yeah. someone that has just been a Christian, but just never really, really studied the Bible for themselves. They they don't know where to start. That is a big question I get. Another question, I, I don't know where to begin. I just want to know where to yeah. begin, or I want to know uh, how to get a little bit deeper, you know, mm-hmm. maybe they... Maybe they do devotionals, which are great, right? There's a time and place for devotionals, though. Devotionals are awesome. I love them. Um, But what about digging a little bit deeper, right? And so Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, you know, I know for me, um, when I was, I was both a brand new Christian at one point and also a restored Christian. I call it a restored Christian Mm -hmm. because I I had walked away from the faith for four years. Like, like really, I I didn't even think about God. Like, I mean, I was Mm -hmm. technically still saved, but I was... Just didn't God love me, but I did not show love for him at all. So for those mm-hmm. four years, um, you know, I was kind of like, I just, I lost, not completely, but I, I lost all the things that I was edified with. And so when I came back, I, I needed my sisters in Christ to help me again and to, mm-hmm. and to, you know, I needed my church community to, to help me. And they didn't have to be professionals in the Bible. They just loved God's word and they right. just, they just studied with me and, they reintroduced me to the gospel again and, and the importance of it. And, um, and, and, you know, I recommitted that. So, you know, I, I'm sure I have listeners here who want to recommit to that. Perhaps you have been a student of the Bible, but have maybe gotten so busy with life, which we all can relate, right? Um, different Mm -hmm. stages, transitions, um, good things, bad things that happen. And so we can either go through discouragements um, that can affect our motivation. Um, So many reasons, so many mental health, so many reasons why we can maybe kind of steer away from studying the Bible. So um, I I love, I love that, you know, um, especially the girls, I'm going to talk about, uh, I say the girls, but you guys are ladies. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I, 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 I love it that you ladies, when you are on your channel, one of the things that resonates with me personally is that you emphasize uh, that you don't have to be a scholar, you know? Um, and I know, I know you guys have amazing resources you've created, but just if you can expand a little bit on that, like why, why doesn't someone need to be a scholar? Like, you know, how, speak to that, like speak to why you say that. Cause I know you guys aren't, you don't have to be a scholar. You can just, just get into your word. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, um, I can. So I started reading the Bible when I was in middle school, every morning I'd wake up and I can promise you that I was nowhere close to being a scholar (laughs) at that point in my life. Um, And Uh, One thing I love about God's word is that a little child can understand it and a 80 year old Bible scholar who's been studying, you know, knows Greek and Hebrew under couldn't understand so much. So I really love Taylor's point about the Holy Spirit. So when you become a believer, you have God's spirit living within you and he's the one who is our helper and he's the one who reveals God's word to us. So we can take the pressure off of ourselves and thinking, okay, I have to figure this all out on my own. Um, When you come to Bible study, you can say, Lord, I might not be able to understand this. And I ask you for your help. And I ask you to show me, like, teach me what you want me to learn. And, you know, I can promise you every time I open my Bible, even if it's just something small, it's not maybe this huge, profound, oh my gosh thing, but it, God teaches me and he convicts me and he opens my eyes to things. And I can guarantee that that's not of myself. So it's not me being a scholar. It's, it's God opening up my heart to his word. And so, Mm. yeah, you do not have to be a scholar, but I would also just recommend anyone 
um, to also go out of their way and do some studying on your own. For example, get a good study Bible or a good commentary or start looking up videos online. Like Bible Project has great videos that are educational and that are really just fun to watch. And so in those small ways, you can kind of pick scholars' brains and see, okay, I'm reading this passage. I'm confused about it. Hey, I want to just see what does this pastor have to say about it? Or what does the Bible, I really trust the Bible project. So what do they have to say about it? And to get, you know, different people's perspectives, you don't have to go to Bible school for that in order to glean off of different commentaries and study Bibles. And honestly, personally, I I love doing that in my study time. It's not the first thing I go to. I like to first try to figure it out on my own with the Lord and say, okay, what does this mean? But I never will guilt myself or shame myself for saying, you know what? I just don't really understand this fully. And I want to see what a scholarly perspective is on it. So yeah, I 100% would say you do not have to be a scholar to study the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I would just add to that too. This is um, Ellen, the mom speaking here. <laughs> and that is, um, I think that, you know, when you start this personal time of Bible reading, and you begin with a prayer to God, and you, you ask God to reveal himself to you through these words, let the Holy Spirit um, point out all those different things Ashley mentioned um, that can that will teach you more about him. And I think what happens is you take this little baby step to maybe agree to read a chapter a day or even just one verse a day. And then all of a sudden you get a thirst and you just want to know more and more. And the more and more can be reading more books of the Bible, or it can be going deeper within one chapter, one verse, one word even. Mm. So there's so many kind of different layers and components to it. And I would just also add that I think another great way is to be in community with other people so that you can see kind of their fervor and their excitement for the Lord. I know I I was in a, a Bible study group for 20 years and had mentors that I learned so much, just their modeling, just, just um, being with them, hearing them talk about God's word was incredibly influential um, in my life and helped my growth and my zeal <laughs> to to want to know more. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I love um, you mentioned the, you know, even if you had like when you dig deep into maybe one word or two words, you know, that resonated with me right there at that moment, because I know for me, when I take the extra time, and I'll be honest, it's really on the weekends because I work full-time like many people, either work full-time, full-time mom, or just have a lot going on in life, right? So maybe your in-depth time might be on a weekend or sure. one day a week when it's less busy. So that's more like my in-depth time with the word. That's when I can really dig deep and just get into, you know, or, or something else that I actually... Um, talked about on my podcast, when you're really busy during the week, um, you can use what I call the SIT methods, S-I-T. I, I just abbreviated it. You read the scripture or scriptures, and then you eyes for inquiry. So you write down any questions that you want, and you maybe you can't get to at the moment, but you'll leave them for the weekend. And then the thoughts, the, what thoughts you have or things that you learn in the moment. So it, that takes maybe seven to 10 minutes max. And so I go back into the inquiry uh, questions and I'll go and study that then. And then that's when I can dig deeper into my word. I can, I can just go, Oh, this word, I, or I'll even write down and I'll highlight like a word that I want to dig deeper into because it just stood out. And I'm like, I, maybe, you know, the definition already, but you just know that there's something deeper within that context, within the text. And so, you know, that's kind of like that, that's me. And, you know, some people have the time to do it every day. Awesome. More power to you if you do. Um, but if you don't, that, that might be something good. I just wanted to kind of put in there that if you don't have that time to do that inquiry and dig deeper, you can do it. Like, let's say on a weekend, for example, or on that one 
one time a week that you can dig deeper into your word. So thank you for that. I, I love, you know, all these um, amazing tips you ladies are giving us. And I know that you have tons of resources, tons. I myself have purchased from you guys. I'm an affiliate with you guys. And um, one mm -hmm. of the things that I'm really, really, uh, it, it's, it, I think you recently I don't know if it's your the last course you posted or the latest course, but you guys have a series of courses that you put out there. Can you tell us a little bit about those courses? Go ahead, you Ash. Me too, or Tay, do yeah, you know? no, Ash, oh, you go okay. ahead. Um, so it is called the In-Depth Bible Study Academy. And wow, we spent a whole year creating this. And it is just, it is from our hearts to anyone who is desiring to learn how to study their Bible. And the beautiful thing about it is that there are 12 courses, which sounds like, ah, oh, that's so overwhelming. Um, but you can purchase one course at a time and they're at an extremely affordable price. And so you can get one course and you can take it as long or as short as you want. And pretty much what it is, is learning how to study the Bible. Like, let's say you start at the first course and you don't know anything. You're just new to this. You're a new believer. You've never opened the Bible. And you're like, hey, I want to learn how to study the Bible. That first course is for you. And all the way from course one to 12, we just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So it's it's a journey of becoming a mini Bible scholar and learning how to study the word for ourselves and learning how to end up study the Bible and taking the baby steps of, of saying, you know what, I have this dream and desire to learn how to study my Bible and I'm going to accomplish that. And so me and Taylor went to Bible school for four years and it was so incredible. It was so hard. It was so good. It was so eye-opening and life-changing. Um, but what we realized is that a lot of people either don't have the time to go to Bible school. That's four years, right? That's a long time. Um, to get your undergrad, right? Or maybe you don't have the money. It's college is really expensive. Or um, maybe it's just you already are in a different field, right? We have so many, we have teachers, we have doctors, we have all these different things. Maybe you just didn't realize that, hey, I wanted to go down that path. That is why we created the In-Depth Bible Study Academy for anyone who wants kind of a more academic, an easier academic way to learn how to study their Bible. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I think that's so important. You know, what I really loved is that you broke it down into all those parts and they are truly affordable, like ridic ridiculously mm -hmm. affordable. I'm like, y'all need to up those prices for real. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, you know, because it, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure in time probably, but th this is just amazing. What easy access you give people. Like, seriously, I'm just, I'm just so blown away that you have had so, like, you have such a heart to help people really delight in God's work. Cause I know that is your mission and delight yeah. in God's word. And um, just, to see how you've come from not not just creating devotionals or journals or you know things like that which are beautiful but um and even methods right but also um now you have this course so i, I wanted to put that out there because i feel like so many of my listeners just really don't know how to start and and sometimes we just we need like some organization i know for me i love when i can be guided by something either a course or a group coaching yeah. or some kind of coach like it's so hard for me to stay focused. I don't know. I know that so many of my listeners can relate. It's just the distractions of life. And so we, when we have something to guide us, uh, uh, something organized like that, it could really help. So I really encourage you ladies to, um, my listeners to really look into that. Well, with that said, I'm going to ask the ladies to share how that they can connect with you and um, what other, maybe other resources you have to offer, anything like that. Um, where can they find you both on the podcast and channel? Go ahead and share. How can they connect with you more? Yeah, absolutely. Well, our uh, website is coffeeandbibletime.com, and that's kind of our hub for all of our information. So you can access the YouTube channel, the podcast, 
our courses, the academy, um, everything is on our on our website there. Certainly, we would love to have you be part of the Coffee and Bible Time community by checking out Coffee and Bible Time YouTube channel and the podcast is the same. We just we that's one thing is that um, we really want people in our community to be feel like they are seen, heard, and known. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and I think that the people that respond to the YouTube videos kind of form this loving, caring group just when people ask questions. Um, They help each other out. So I would definitely encourage you to check that out. We also just launched a couple of new products. Taylor, if you want to talk about that. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, do you have the uh well we can show the zoom one (laughs) okay one of them (laughs) is our psalms devotional so this is kind of uh as a devotional that we created to help people have a little bit of structure while they walk through the psalms so we give you guys prompts and questions that you can have so you in-depth one psalm for four days so you can really milk out everything you can from that we give you some journaling space to do so and then the other three days of the week we give you independent study time to do um a couple other psalms on your own so the goal for it is kind of to let you be be a independent bible studier but have kind of some uh what do you call it bumpers 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 <laughs> have some bumpers so that you don't feel totally alone we give you some questions that you can ask but it's definitely largely independent we have that on our website um as well as amazon but we also came out with um an undated planner so a planner that doesn't have dates in it so that you can use it no matter what time of the year it is uh, or any year for that matter but it has uh spaces for you to log your bible reading in there so you can kind of hold yourself accountable create some christian goals in there and then we also have a little mini leather notebook um that we ashley. use for do you have it with you ash maybe not or ashley you should talk about that one. yeah you should talk I about that i don't have it with me right now but it i use it for scripture memorization and i can take it with me anywhere on an airplane in the car at the doctor's office it's just a cute little book and i yeah, I memorize scripture in it. It's really, really nice. I've used it for like three years. And then finally, I was like, why don't we make a product like this? Because I think it, people would like it and would love to use it. So yeah, I love that. I was going to say, we should, kind of like, oh, here. She here's an it. example. Oh, okay. Of mine, oh. But like where you can just oh, put, my goodness. you put the first letter um, of each word in the verse, and then I flip it over and then I've got the verse there. Oh. But that's awesome. And then it's so little you can take it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. That Direct is such us. a good idea. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much, ladies. This has been truly my honor to have you on the podcast. I am beyond thrilled to finally get to meet you. I can't Yay. say in person, Aww. but on camera. <laughs> um, longtime fan, like I said, and I'm truly excited for um for just what the the ladies listening um have gotten out of this and I would love to hear from you ladies get into my community if you're not there yet go to bit.ly forward slash let's be intentional that's bit uh slash l bit.ly forward slash let's be intentional you can get into my Facebook community and I let's start that conversation what was your biggest takeaway And of course, I will have in the episode details or show notes, I will have the uh, details so that you can know how to reach these beautiful, beautiful ladies over at Coffee and Bible Time. All right. So thank you again for joining me. It was such a pleasure having you, ladies. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. A joy to meet you, Rosa. Uh, The joy is mine. Thank you. Mm -hmm.